Hi. I spend a lot of time talking about the structure of power and its effects. A couple of months ago I talked about the law, two weeks ago I talked about propaganda, this week I'm on the police. It's not the only video I'll make about the police, or the only one I've made. This one's just about why the police will inevitably hinder every effort you make to change the status quo. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. Everyone who's concerned about freedom, justice, equality, peace, anti-racism, anti-fascism, anti-capitalism, or otherwise changing things, should have a realistic understanding of power. Knowing how the police work has always been essential to understanding power, and it might be particularly urgent now as more and more people around the world are clashing with police in their efforts to change the world. If you want to know what the propaganda tells us to believe, let's read part of an article that recently appeared in my newsfeed. In this climate crisis, the police should protect Extinction Rebellion, not arrest them, by Rob Cooper. This guy Rob Cooper, he'll tell you he himself was a cop. So we'll see what he believes about the police. Um, we'll, we'll, we won't read the whole article, but uh, we'll go over some key parts of it. Earlier this month, Extinction Rebellion was labeled an extremist ideology by counter-terrorism police in the southeast of England. Well, he probably could have started by not only putting quotation marks around extremist ideology, but also around counter-terrorism. I'm assuming, by the way, that you know at least the very basics of what Extinction Rebellion is here. If not, you should probably go look it up. Let's see. Documents they had prepared instructed teachers and others to report members, in other words, to snitch on anyone who might be considered radical. Because, as we all know, radical is bad. And it says, the police have since admitted that this was an error. No, it was not an error. What do you think? It was an accident? They thought Extinction Rebellion was actually this huge militia that was just about to overthrow the government, but it was an error. Oh, sorry. These are the intelligence people. They knew exactly what they were doing. The document has been recalled, yeah, because people found out about it. But my deep concern about how they came to this dangerous conclusion about a peaceful movement of doctors, mothers, octogenarians, and like me, former police officers, has been keeping me awake at night, especially as I was in the force for nearly three decades. Well, didn't you see during that entire term of three decades, didn't you see what the police did? You didn't see them beating up all the peaceful protesters during that time, because they did. You didn't see them treating people as extremists and terrorists and so on. You didn't see all the time that they've been labeling people that. Were you just asleep or keeping your eyes closed for that whole three decades? I believed my job was to protect the public. Yeah, well, I used to believe all kinds of things, too. And now I'm asking the police to protect me, my family, and our communities. Well, unless you, your family, and your community are rich, then why even bother asking? I mean, why don't we just, you know, imagine if there was uh, an invasion of tigers. There were just tigers everywhere, and they were eating people left and right. I could just as easily write an article for, for Metro or whatever that said, you know, now I'm asking the Tigers to protect me, my family, and my community. Well, that's not what they do. 
you can ask them to do whatever you want. You can hope for whatever you want, but if it's if it's completely unrealistic, then you're wasting your time and you're just contributing to the propaganda by saying that that's even possible. They have the opportunity to become a beacon of light. A beacon of light. The police! And do what they can to make sure fundamental human rights are upheld. You don't have any rights, and that's because of the police. Because the police can violate your so-called rights any time they want. By facilitating the protest. Oh yeah, because they've ever done that before? No, they've never done that. Any protest that has ever... Uh, pose any any kind of threat, even this so-called peaceful protest by Extinction Rebellion, will be treated with dangerous suspicion. How could you spend 30 years on the police force and not know that? I joined the non-violent... Yeah, they're always using non-violent as if it's a virtue. The nonviolent civil disobedience group Extinction Rebellion, because I felt a real affinity with the group's first demand of the government. For those in power to be honest about the threat we face from climate and ecological breakdown and to take immediate action. Okay, well, they didn't. And they're not going to, because they work for the different people than you work for. You know? Yeah, it's great. It sounds like a great demand, doesn't it? You know, the people in power have to start being honest, and they have to start, like, changing things. That's not their job. There's no reason to believe they can or will. And least of all, that a, that a non-violent protest is going to force their hand. Then he says things like, I've taken part in the July Uprising. What a rhetorical flourish it is to talk about nonviolent demonstrations of, of, and, and peaceful marches as an uprising, or the October Rebellion. In what way was it a real rebellion? It didn't even threaten anybody in power. So how is it supposed to work? And then it says, at no point did I see any acts of violence or anyone encouraging violence of any kind. Well, maybe that's part of the reason nothing changed. Extinction Rebellion may not get every action right, but to be listed alongside extremists and terrorists at possibly the most important moment in history feels like a worrying precedent. Well, first of all, it's not a precedent. That precedent was set decades ago. They've been labeling peaceful and even harmless people extremists and terrorists for years now. Again, it's, it's not really impressive that, you know, you can be a cop and you can, you can just ignore all that stuff that's been happening. How could you not know? That that's the whole purpose of police. What, how could you not have been doing any of those things yourself? Of course, the author here gives no reasons for us to actually believe the police are supposed to, or even can, support Extinction Rebellion. But that's the thing about propaganda. It makes everything seem normal and obvious. I don't need to cite evidence that water is wet. Likewise, I don't need to explain why the police should be protecting the people in their well-intentioned protest, or why the politicians should be listening to us with our good ideas. You don't need to explain if your point is within the normal. But unsubstantiated beliefs will get your movement thrown in jail, as Extinction Rebellion has already shown us. The cops themselves have already shown their true colors to Extinction Rebellion by locking up thousands of their members. That's them telling you who they are. Why aren't you listening? 
Why are you still harboring fantasies based on what they told you in primary school? And then just yesterday, members of Extinction Rebellion enthusiastically shared this article. Judge reportedly tells Extinction Activists, Extinction Rebellion Activists, you have to succeed while sentencing them. So, I sympathize with you, but I'm going to keep punishing you because I don't want to lose my comfy paycheck. These people are so constrained by their jobs that it doesn't even matter what their opinions are. Of course, what you need to do to change the world is illegal. You're fighting the people who make and enforce the laws. It will always be illegal. You're you're, of course, you're an extremist and a terrorist. You're fighting the people who labeled you that. The state will never help you. And I keep hearing... We demand climate action. We demand things of the government. Shouting, we demand, at a legal demonstration is a meaningless gesture. They're not demanding, they're begging. If you're really demanding, the real question is, what will you do if they don't do what you demand of them? If the answer is nothing, there's no threat whatsoever. And I know nonviolent is, is a useful PR term for a movement, but if you're not capable of violence, a more descriptive adjective would be harmless. It's great that you're out there, but as long as you're trying to play by their rules, you'll still be their slaves. Cops and judges and attorneys general are not guided by a sense of justice. Or if they are, they have ridiculously simplistic thinking about where justice comes from. But then so does anyone who doesn't question the propaganda. The government is the will of the people, we assume. Therefore, working for the state is working for the people. That's all most folks need to know. We've been told all our lives the purpose of the police is to keep us safe. So we get confused when we see them beating, arresting, and spying on peaceful demonstrators just trying to solve social problems. We've also been assured that when they aren't working for us, it must mean that the system isn't working properly at the moment or we've got the wrong politicians in place. That's because many aspiring activists have not analyzed the nature of the system they're fighting against. They don't even realize they're fighting the system. They think they're educating people, raising awareness, putting pressure on politicians to change. They think the problem is the people in power don't realize there's a problem. Or like it says in the article we just read, government needs to start being honest about climate change. Government needs to tell the truth. If you believed that kind of thing, it would stand to reason that peaceful protest, or consulting with decision makers, or working for and thereby influencing them, should be effective strategies for change. If I could just get the ear of the president, things would get better. They wouldn't. Hundreds of years of believing that's how things work have got us nowhere. Another essential aspect of the propaganda, of course, is to believe in reform, that you can legislate different incentives into the system. Again, see the past couple of hundred years to refute this claim. But we need to believe the system is malleable, that we can change it, so it can keep calling itself a democracy. But propaganda messages are there to hide the purpose of the state and the reasons police exist. The purpose, the purpose of the police is to protect the interests of the ruling class. That's it. Anything else they do is incidental. They are the violence that ensures policies are implemented and people who pose a threat to those policies are neutralized. In fact, 
there have been a few Supreme Court decisions in the U.S. that have declared categorically it is not the job of the police to protect you. The loyalty of the police is to the people who sign their checks, not to you. That's why whatever tactic you employ, you'll never win over more than a couple of them. Not only are they victims of the propaganda too, they have a strong financial interest in continuing to believe it. Part of their job is to lie to you. They might tell you you'll be safe if you go with them. You'll look less guilty if you talk. We'll let you go if you comply. And so on. They won't. This meme was made by the National Lawyers Guild, and it's worth looking at, uh, at least briefly. It says, talking to cops is never safe. I'll, uh, you can pause the video and read it. You can, you can find it. Um, you could easily find it on Google Images um, or on, here it says, nlg.org. You could, you could check it out. But the point is... <laughs> Don't talk to police. I also recommend you watch the video Don't Talk to Police, and I've left a link in the description. Um, either way, I think the message is pretty clear. Alternatives to the police and the state will be the subject of a couple of future videos. For now, when you're out in the streets, please remember the state is not on your side regardless of what its agents tell you. The state protects the capitalist class who cause most of our problems. If you want your strategy to succeed, you'll need to keep that in mind.